when you pray uh, for somebody to be healed, first off, do you pray? No. Jesus never prayed for a sick person. He commanded healing. So you don't, you don't have to pray for what's already been, been provided. If you have authority, you have pre-permission to do your job. You don't have to pray to find out if you should do your job. Your job is to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, and preach the gospel. That's your job. As a Christian, that's what you're here for. And if you're going to do that, then you don't have to have, if he's already given you permission, then you don't have to get permission. And and nowhere in the Bible does it say to pray for the sick. And I'm talking about uh, going out and I'm talking about unbelievers. Now, the only place that he mentions anything like that is in James chapter 5. In James chapter 5, it says, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and they will come out and they'll pray over them and they will pray the prayer of faith they'll anoint them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save, heal the sick. That's the only time it ever mentions anything said like that. But whenever you're talking about on the street, you don't pray on the street. You command. Why? Because you represent Jesus. You're not, now listen, you may be trying to get them to accept him, but, you're, but you are representing him. You say what he would say. You act the way he would act. He never begged anybody, for, or he never begged the Father for anybody's healing. He spoke it. And he always told him, what do you want me to do for you? Well, I want to receive my eyesight. Okay, receive your eyesight. And they got it. Why? Not because of a special gift, but because of who he was in union with the Father. See, if we understand, what's the great commandment of God? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is like unto the first, which is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Pretty simple. And most people will do that. They will try to love God with all their heart. And then they think, is this all? Is there more? Can I love him with more? And they, they, and they push, which is fine. But it's funny because he, he tells us to love God, but then he also says that you might know the love of God. So you have to know that you're loved, not just that you love God. See, a, a one-sided love affair doesn't work. You have to know that you love him, but you have to know he loves you and that he loved you even before you loved him and that his love is so great, so amazing that we can actually be called the sons of God. There's nobody else that can do that. Nobody else is called a son of God. That's us. That's now. That's who we are. Why? Because we're in right relationship with him. Now, that doesn't mean you do everything right. That means you don't make mistakes. It means when you make mistakes, you run back to him really quick. Amen. Get, get to him before the devil does. Yeah. You know, because the devil's going to try to accuse. Yeah. You just get there first. When you get there first and tell the father, by the time the devil gets there, he's got nothing on you. Yeah. Amen? So just get there quick. Just make it quick. It's easy. Yeah. 